Okay. So, we're beginning with a quote. To situate us here. Aristotle recognized topos as a location, ground, or place argument can take place. A common place, a common line, like a line of argument. In Euclid's estimation, a line is a breathless flank between that which has no part, a point, and another that which has no part, a point. It holds points in common. The place, the topos, makes parts of no part. We hear topos and topic in our argument in the mathematics of surfaces that describe objects that behave commonly. The topological, for this purpose, is whatever commonness is. Agamben writes of the state of exception as the topos, the topology, or the topological between nature and culture that show themselves to be one within the other in the state of exception, which is both and neither. How do we bring poetics to Agamben's state of exception? How do we find in the making of poesis, the doing of it, the act of it, a topology? Or put another way, what is the topology of poetics? Taken further, how common are we willing to become? Or what does difference have to do with the common? I'd like to give some context, background, and structural thoughts about what I'm calling the Topological Poetics Research Institute. I should say at the outset that this is a strictly internal document, not to be circulated outside the group, which we might refer to as an Innovative Poetic Coterie, an IPC. I'm already hesitant to share my ideas so widely, even just among our IPC, but I trust I'm in the company of others who also have exciting innovative ideas they would prefer to keep close to the chest, at least for now. With that being said, and really for no other reason than professional security and good due diligence, I will be asking each member of the IPC to sign a restrictive NDA prior to my class business. Why topology? Topology is, among other things, the study of mathematical surfaces. Without unfolding the manifold of space-time too obliquely, the topological view critiques critical distance as a metaphorical colonialism that depends on fictions of emptiness, uninhabited land, autonomy, and non-humans to enact its violence, form content, genocide, conquest. The letter goes on to consider the specific technical ways that Kant's philosophical notion of reason, understanding, and judgment all depend on a complement and colony on TPRI as an investigative research unit seeks to uncover these kinds of problems, and it aims to solve them. TPR produces white papers to solve vexing aesthetic and poetic problems. These problems might be topologically insoluble, meaning their solutions are TPRI's goal is not institutional critique, but the critique of becoming institutional. A white paper is an authoritative report or guide that informs the reader about a complex issue and presents the issuing body's philosophy on the matter. It is meant to help readers understand an issue, solve a problem, TPRI's make a decision. TPRI's authority and legitimacy emerges from its institutional proximity, the strength of its solutions, its actionability, and the fertility of its image. Understanding, problem solving, decision making. White Paper, Avant-Garde Insta. The goal of this white paper is to observe poetry from an entirely neutral perspective as neither radical political praxis nor pure aesthetic artifact. 
in order to assess the value of poetry and its community's potential. Hoarders of cultural capital lurking among the elite universities. Poetry is ubiquitous. Our relationship to value and commodity exchange. The value of poetry exceeds price. The value yet to be discovered. The combined capital grown by these poems could likely pay for every MFA candidate's tuition in the United States. Social media financialization discovered how to extract poetry's effectual labor in the form of clicks, likes, and of course, data. This has produced a specific the language aesthetic. element. Remember, the poem of the more than its language element. The network should be given, reproduced by algorithm, working to extract valorized personal affect. private tension latent in all social media ongoing light projects of Rachel Blood of Plus dissolving of poetry into the technical mechanism at its interface. It must deftly move in the stream of information to obtain those all important clicks, hesitations, and shares. Properly, no verse should be called a poem if it does not convey the totality of perfect rest, a desire to place everything, everything aptly, perfectly, belonging within and with a context. Desire for what is objectively perfect, inextricably the direction of historic and contemporary particulars. Louis Zukovsky, an objective. Introducing your poem and perfecting poetry. At present, Poetry is wildly undervalued in the market relative to the extent of its social circulation. But unique readers want poems that speak to them. Your poem will use our highly developed proprietary perfecting poetry algorithm to generate user-specific perfect poems, unique perfect poems for each and every poetry lover. As we know, aesthetic disagreements often get in the way of the pure pleasure poetry offers your poem will generate poems for the sophisticated MFA degree holder and the casual reader alike. No more aesthetic arguments means more poetic pleasure. Are you ready to disrupt? Join your poem today. Welcome to TPRI Now, presented by Mono D Studios, the podcast of the Topological Poetics Research Institute, where we explore surfaces that might be depths, and depths that might only be surfaces. Today on TPRI, today on TPRI, today on TPRI, today's we podcast is titled I am me because my algorithm knows me. We're operating in the field of racist epistemology we will be discussing and discussing a history of the guard pedagogy. I click, therefore, I am. We investigate if it is possible that at perception's entrance Con. into the English language, geopolitical metaphorizations, and white epistemological ignorance. And I simply cannot watch those I'd pictures. like to agree with Mills, as perhaps has already become clear, that Kant's idiotic racist statement dripping with epistemic ignorance and conceptual blindness is the result of a philosophical, epistemological, conceptual Footnote schema two. so the bound up with the special requirements of the colonial variable appears more than translation, quote, assimilated from Latin ad to before the initial P as Latin ad proba ap proba. I'm beginning to uncover the heart of this podcast. Growth is growth. Developing is development, and consequently placed the emphasis upon the completed project. Thus, he set up a goal which meant the arrest of growth, and a As criterion I imagine it, which is the not applicable to immediate the sum guidance total of powers of quantifiable the data of the, uh, about uh, a given body of app perception generated the loss of by the cry machine intelligence. Of perceptions, pleasure. You've been listening to TPRI. Presented by You've been listening to Studios, TPRI, the a presentation of the Mono D Studio Poetics Research Institute. The podcast we do the Topological Poetics Research Institute. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Tune in next time. That my own be services. You've been listening to TPRI. Thank you. I really just wanted to make a movie about one of my plants. We can
continue our analysis of the prosthetic vocalizations of technological apparatuses in colonial empire. We actually detonated that bomb on a city. By 1991, with Paul Mann's blistering critique, The Theory Death of the Avant-Garde, we've reached a stratospheric height of self-reflexive critique that is nothing short of the avant-garde's event horizon. With Moten, I think this affectual sentimental orientation to be as disarmed as possible. Discovering the emergence of meaning out of language's field is the subject of stochastic poetics, but it is the out-outside here, a casting toward the general condition of formality. Only artworks are capable of transmitting phonic echo signals. Knowledge, no matter how I get it, involves exclusion and repression. The more utopian hope of poetry is to charge language, image, and sound with effective, proliferating Dash, dash, U, dash, dash, J, dash, 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 Y, six, M, mm, Z, mm, uh, Z, G, uh, v, B, mm, 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 dash, dash, and I, I, comma, slash, 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 dash, mm, mm, dash, 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 bzz, over G, G under. But why read them left to right? The line is followed but also disregarded. The dashes suture the eye, pointing to letters, pointing to sound. D, mm, quote, colon, O, negative Q, one half A, mm, v, J, J, G, I, F, D, A, OI. Alice wrote a new poem, Attached. I'm making a chapbook of ten poems, one for each digit of her little hands, and an addition of ten. She has written three baby etudes so far. This new one seems to have a little loy going on and a splash of Saroyan. She presses the return carriage and spacebar herself and indicates when poem is finished. Plus, she seems to pause for a moment before beginning to type, as though in meditation. Alice brings the reader into the comma, as an emergent, subtler switch in language's flow, which brings us to the end of the line, but another exercise in the provisional end stop. The end that is not an end, whose endness is only an end insofar as it ends within a flow that will always continue, even beyond the normative lingual as such. The M, the N, the LF, all circulating around the vertical and horizontal bars of letter. I thought she might have broken the machine with her open-fisted pummelings. Yes, I will attempt to recreate the scene of composition diagrammatically, but it will be no small feat giving Alice's brutal style. How do we understand ourselves? 
coming in the language. Language given to us. The technical device. Our poem. <laughs> 